What's up guys, this is me Padma from Programmings and welcome back to this series on C Programming. In the last video, we learned to create a function. This function, which we define ourselves, I called user defined function. In C, there is another type of function called standard library function. The function definition of standard library function is already provided by C and we can directly use them in our program. So let's get started. Before we learn about standard function, let's see a simple example to print a text. You can see this code in my code editor. I'll run this program and you can see hello world is printed on the screen. Here printf is a standard library function that prints the text on the screen. We haven't provided any definition for printf. Instead, we are directly using it in our program. In C programming, a standard library function is a predefined function which is already defined inside a file and we can directly use them in our program. In our case, the definition of printf file is present inside the stdio.h header file. That's why we have included stdio.h header file inside our program. And once the file is included, we are able to use the printf function inside our program. And also the scanf function that we have used to take the input from the user is also a standard library function. And it is also defined inside the stdio.h header file. There are various header files available in C programming. This file includes different standard library function that we can use directly in our program. Let's learn about some of the C library files and standard library function present in those files. We'll start with the math file. The math.h file provides us with various built-in function that helps us to perform mathematical operation easily. For example, the sqrt function computes the square root of a number. All these math-based standard library function are defined inside the math.h header file. So to use them, we import the math.h header file in our program. Let's now use this math-based library function in our program. I'll start with the square root function. On your screen, you can see the basic structure of a C program. Now, first I'll import the math.h header file. So I'll include math.h header file. Then I'll create an int variable. Say num and I'll assign value 25 to this. I'll print the square root of this number. So I'll write printf bracket inside quotation square root percent lf and comma sqrt inside parenthesis name of our variable num. Here the sqrt function returns the value in double so I have used percent lf to print the output. Now let me run this code. As you can see we get 5 as output which is the square root of 25. Here we don't have to worry about the definition of sqrt function. We can simply pass a number and get the square root of that number. Similarly, we can use the cbrt function to compute the cube root of a number. Let me show you. I'll change the value of 25 to 27 and I'll change this function sqrt to cbrt and then I'll change this text from square root to cube root. So I'll run this. As you can see, I get 3 as output, which is the cube root of 27. Now let me show you one more example. This time I'll calculate the power of a number. I'll use the same code from earlier and I'll remove these lines. And I'll create two variables. So int a and I'll assign value 5 to this int variable a and another variable b and I'll assign 2 to this. Now I'll use pow function. So inside the parenthesis I'll use two variables a and b. Here this pow function is the power function. I'll assign this to a double variable result. So double result is equals to pow function and finally I'll print this using printf statement so power percent lf comma 
result. And I'll run this code. Here we get 25 as our output. So what happens here is this first argument a of the power function is the base value and the second argument b is a power raised to the base. So it gives 5 raised to the power 2 which is equals to 25. Now let me change this value of b from 2 to 3 and I'll run this again. And this time you can see we get 125 which is 5 raised to 3. There are various functions defined inside the math.h error file. You can learn about them on programis.com website. I'll put the link in the video description below. By the way, if you are watching this, there is a good chance you want to improve your skills in C programming. Lucky for you, we have a mobile app that provides a well-structured C programming course with certification at the end. And you can use the app alongside the video to practice on the built-in compiler. Our course is free, so download now by scanning this QR code or click the link in the video description. Now let's learn about different library function available inside the ctype.h header file. This file provides function to perform various operations on characters, hence it is known as a character type header file. Let's see some example. So you can see this basic structure of C program here. First I'll import C type header file in our program. So C type dot h header file. Now inside the main function, I'll create a character variable, say alpha, and I'll assign a character e to this. Let's first use a function to convert this character to uppercase. So I'll use a function to upper, and inside the parenthesis, I'll use alpha, and I'll assign this to a char variable upper. So char upper is equals to this function. Then I'll print this using printf statement. So percent %c, comma, upper. I will run this code and you can see we get capital E as output. Now let's change this uppercase value to lowercase. So after this print statement, I'll write char lower and I'll assign function to lower inside parenthesis, I'll put here upper. Then I'll print this lower variable as well. So percent %c, comma, lower. And then I'll run this code. As you can see, the capital E is now converted to lowercase e. In our example, to upper and to lower are standard library function that are used to convert character to uppercase and lowercase respectively. Okay guys, we need your support to keep these types of content free for all users. YouTube really likes engagement on the video, so leave a comment below, press that like button, hit subscribe if you haven't already, let's get the engagement score high up so that more people can discover and enjoy these courses. Now that we know how to use library function in our program, let's see why standard library function are so helpful. As we saw earlier, we can directly use library function in our program. We don't have to worry about the function definition and we don't have to write the code ourselves. This saves significant amount of time and since they are already tested, they work completely fine without any error. Also, they are built in inside the C program. So they are optimized for better performance and developers are constantly improving to keep them up to date. There are so many library function in C programming. If you want to learn about them, visit our text-based tutorial. I'll put the link in the video description below. Now to revise what we have learned in this video, here is a programming task for you. Create a program that compute the result of a number raised to the power of the square root of a number. So first take the input from user, compute the square root of number using sqrt function, compute the power of the number raised to the power of its square root and then print the result. You can find the answer to this question in our GitHub repository and also if you want to revise this concept, all this program in this video are present in there. The link is in the video description below.
Now that we have reached the end of this video, it's time for program quiz. What is the correct way to include library function in our program? Comment your answer below. See you in the next video. Happy programming.